in the preparatory process towards the LDC5 conference. I thank you all for having set aside the time to respond to our invitation given your busy schedules. I see this as a strong sign of commitment across the African LDCs and amongst development partners to do all we can to accelerate and further an inclusive and sustainable development agenda for the peoples of the LDCs. I'm sure all of us would have preferred to have met in person in beautiful uh, Lilongwe. Our second best is to connect with you all virtually despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. The pandemic continues its global spread. We are all deeply concerned by the ongoing spread to the health of our peoples. And we are equally concerned by the socioeconomic, let alone financial challenges with what looks like a prolonged economic downturn that will have to be managed. 12 difficult months of living with the ongoing pandemic has elapsed a global pandemic that has affected the health of people everywhere and which has triggered financial, economic and social shocks that affect the African LDCs and Haiti severely, not just today, but also tomorrow. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a whole range of uncertainties and let us be frank, unknown. Throughout climate change and its impacts have not stood still. The effects of the ongoing climate change poses additional and serious threats to the development prospects of the LDCs. We knew before COVID that the progress made throughout the last decade during the implementation of the Istanbul Program of Action was rather mixed. The road to inclusive and sustainable development for the African LDCs in Haiti has not been easy and will not be easy. On the plus side, we have seen important strides. We have seen positive trends, in tackling poverty, health, as well as gender equality through the empowerment of women and girls. There have also been notable improvements in access to water, safe water and sanitation, and the generation of renewable energy. We should also note the significant gains in mobile network coverage and access to the internet. This, of course, has become very critical during lockdowns and the travel restrictions, which the global pandemic triggered. The big risk is how hard won development gains that many countries made are now very much under threat with the COVID-19 pandemic. More and more vaccines are coming to the market. Just last week, the G7 made a set of encouraging global access measures, and every effort must be made to ensure the accessibility to all together with equitable distribution. Indeed, we are only on the road to safety if all are on that road. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres addressed the importance of equitable access to vaccines just last week, describing it as, I quote, the biggest moral test before the global com com community. He continues, progress on vaccination has been wildly uneven and unfair. Just 10 countries have administered 75% of all COVID vaccines. Meanwhile, more than 130 countries have not received a single dose. Those affected by conflict and insecurity are at particular risk of being left behind." End of quote. We now are well on our way towards next year's LDC5 conference. The stakes are high for Africa's 33 LDCs and Haiti. No effort can be spared to leverage opportunity of this conference to reach a global agreement on how in solidarity, we cannot just overcome the impacts of COVID-19, but ensure an action package that can overcome the depth and breadth of challenges the LDCs face. The conference must be ambitious in its action agenda. It must agree on actions enabling the LDCs to build back better, increase resilience and achieve the SDGs and graduation thresholds. During this week of the African Regional Review, we will review progress in the implementation of the Istanbul Program of Action over the past, past decade. We will focus on what needs to be done to boost the development prospects of African LDCs. Discussions will focus on how to overcome the challenges the pandemic has brought about, what must be done to tackle the climate challenge in line with the Paris Agreement goals, how to strengthen trade, how to mobilize innovative ideas, how to mobilize resources, how we can go about structural transformation and uh, transformation in the digital era. 
and above all, how to build a peaceful and inclusive societies. It is a very tall agenda. At the same time, we must look at how the international community can and will support the development of the LDCs over the next decade. The thread running back through this week's discussion is how African LDCs can get back on track, build back better from this current crisis, and indeed how to build inclusive, resilient, and sustainable futures of our people. The work this week, the outcome of this work are critical to the preparations for the fifth United Nations Conference on LDCs next January in Doha, Qatar. This week, we lay the foundation for the outcome of that conference, which we hope will be a new program of action to coincide with the remaining action years for the Sustainable Development Goals. This is our shared opportunity as partners and generally for the international community to ensure that the LDCs are at the core of Agenda 2030 and are not left behind. I wish you all a productive and successful African Regional Review Meeting and look forward to inspiring contributions and discussions. I thank you. You can speak. Yes. Well, um, can you hear us? Maybe you can continue from there. On va continuer de, de là. Yes, please. Oui, allez-y. Yes, please, Excellency, we can continue. Oui, Votre Excellence, vous pouvez continuer. Good afternoon and good morning. It looks like the minister is frozen for a moment. So in the meantime, um, I'm pleased to present an opening statement um, in the form of a video delivered by His Excellency Le Mr. Volkan Bozkir, President of the General Assembly of the United Nations. Mais nous yeah, avons un message en vidéo the video now. du Secrétaire général des Nations Unies en vidéo. Excellencies, ministers, distinguished participants. Two weeks ago, we started the intergovernmental process of preparation for the LDC conference. We all know that looking back better, stronger, and more resilient from the COVID-19 pandemic is an imperative for LDCs. Investment to bolster LDCs against economic and climate shocks, which derail or stifle sustainable development prospects, is critical. I was encouraged by the high expectations for an ambitious outcome of the conference in Doha, expressed by member states. The Istanbul program of action is firmly situated in the 2030 agenda. For the past 10 years, it has guided sustainable development efforts of the international community. This regional review provides a unique opportunity to study and better understand the successes and challenges of implementing the Istanbul Program of Action in African LDCs and Haiti. This review must be used to inform our efforts going forward, so we can focus on the many areas of where progress is needed most. Your efforts this week will feed into a new program of action that will be adopted in Doha in January 2022. The Istanbul Program of Action also highlights the importance of partnerships and involvement of all relevant stakeholders. This, of course, includes the governments of LDCs and their development partners, but also parliaments, the private sector, civil society, the UN system and other international organizations. 
I am very happy to see that all these groups are represented here today and encourage you to use this opportunity to grow and deepen these partnerships. Excellencies, throughout my presidency, I have prioritized the issues faced by the most vulnerable member states with a special focus on LDCs, who are close to my heart. While all member states have been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, the most vulnerable countries face the greatest risk of losing a generation of hard-won development gains. We cannot let that happen. This is where the 2020 promise of leaving no one behind will be won or lost. We must ensure our efforts also benefit from the demographic dividend of large youth populations, especially in African LDCs and Haiti. Opportunities must be created so that youth populations can pursue their ambitions and contribute to better conditions on our planet. Bridging the technology gap between LDCs and other developing countries <coughs> is crucial to maximize the benefit of the demographic dividend. Access to the Internet has more than tripled for African LDCs over the past decade. However, around four out of five people in African LDCs still have no access to the Internet. Internet access is fundamental to all forms of social and economic interaction. In this regard, I will convene a thematic debate on digital cooperation and connectivity on the 27th of April to explore whole-of-society approaches to end the digital divide. We need to mobilize the international community to address the growing digital divide that has deepened as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, 789 million people, predominantly in Sub-Saharan Africa, live without access to electricity. Hundreds of millions more only have access to very limited or unreliable electricity. These same people are digitally disconnected. The digital divide exacerbates many pre-existing inequalities. We need to recommit to equal access to technology and to SDG 4 on quality education to empower women, youth and vulnerable groups. Reducing the energy and digital divides simultaneously is necessary to both contain and adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic and to build back better. In addition, investment in education and training is needed to support the acquisition of technological capabilities. Investment is required to meet the growing opportunities and challenges within the digital economy. International support for the LDC Technology Bank and LDC Fund should be increased so that the LDCs have the tools to achieve the 2030 Agenda. Excellencies, I'm looking forward to the outcomes of this meeting, an important milestone on the road to Doha. Let me express my appreciation for the valuable support of Qatar as the host country. As President of the General Assembly, my team and I stand ready to support you. I look forward to convening on June 18th the joint thematic event on the accelerated implementation of the 2030 Agenda in LDCs to leave no one behind in the context of COVID-19, jointly with the President of ECOSOC. The joint event is a key milestone on the road to Doha for LDCs to build consensus on how to accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda in LDCs. One of its main objectives is to further discussions on concrete ways to strengthen global partnerships for sustainable development crucial to realizing the ambitious objective of enabling half the number of LDCs to fulfill the graduation threshold. I'm confident that our discussions in New York, in this and other events, will be enriched by the outcomes of this regional review meeting. I thank you very much for this opportunity to address you today 
and wish you all the best for the remainder of this meeting. President of the General Assembly of the United Nations. In fact, we're supposed to have uh, uh, the Right Honorable Dr. Salos Klaus Chiriman coming first before he did. But just as well, that's, uh, uh, that's him, uh, His Excellency uh, Volkan Bocic. Now, it's my pleasure once again to invite the Right Honorable Dr. Salos Klaus Chiriman Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, who is also Minister of Economic Planning, Development, and uh, Public Sector Reforms. Mr. Vice President, it's your turn. Your Excellency, Dr. Lazarus Makafi Chagwera, President of the Republic of Malawi. Your Excellency, Fekita Otiakamanu, Under Secretary General, and High Representative for LDCs, LLDCs, and SIDs, SIDs, and the Secretary General for the LDC5 Conference, the Excellency Volkan Bosta, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Your Excellency, the Minister of Turkey, Your Excellency Sultan bin Saad Al Muhari, Minister of State, Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of the state of Qatar, Honorable Ms. Karina Gold, Minister of Development Cooperation for Canada, and all distinguished ladies and gentlemen that are joining us this afternoon or morning. I am pleased to welcome you to the Southern Africa Regional Review Meeting of the least development countries in Africa, as well as Haiti. It would have been even more pleasing to meet you all physically here in Lilongwe, Malawi. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 pandemic has left us with no option but to meet virtually, which is a demonstration of our resolve to forge ahead with the LDC's agenda. Prior to COVID-19, we were making some steady progress in implementing our key priority areas. However, the pandemic has promised us all, especially our already fragile economies in all our crucial sectors. In this regard, I wish to extend my condolences for the loss of life and also a message of solidarity to all who have been impacted by the pandemic. During this meeting, we are prepared to have tough and honest conversations about the structural challenges, vulnerabilities, as well as emerging issues that we face in pursuing sustainable development and of course, our desired future. Our hope is to exchange and learn, get insights and agree on concrete, targeted and effective cooperative actions and recommendations that will assist us to overcome structural challenges, thereby accelerating sustainable development progress over the next decade. We are fully aware that the outcome of this meeting will have lasting, a lasting bearing on our linkages towards the achievement of the goals of the 2030 agenda, as well as the agenda 2063. May I therefore urge all distinguished delegates to discuss practical ways of building back better and stronger and deliver the future we want and the future that leaves no one behind. From the warm heart of Africa, accept my best wishes and wishing you fruitful deliberations. You are all most welcome and enjoy the conference I thank you for your attention once again. Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you very much, Vice President of the Republic of Malawi, Dr. Salos Klaus Chirima. It's now my pleasure to invite to the floor His Excellency, Mr. 
Kavusuglo, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, host country of the fourth UN Conference on LDCs. Your Excellencies. Thank you. His Excellency President Dr. Chakwera, the Right Honorable Vice President Dr. Chilima, Madam High Representative, dear colleagues and friends. I am happy to be part of the Africa Review meeting. A decade ago, with the Istanbul Program of Action, we put forward an ambitious vision for LDCs. Since then, the LDCs have achieved progress in uh, bringing their uh, peoples out of uh, poverty. However, only three countries have graduated from the LDCD uh, category in the last decade. So there is still much to be done, particularly at a time when we are facing additional challenges due to COVID-19. The African continent with its 33 LDCs is in need of solid leadership and support from its uh, development partners. And this support is particularly essential in key areas such as economic growth, uh, social progress, women and uh, youth uh, empowerment. Dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as the co-chair of the group of friends of the LDCs, we will continue to do our best to reach these objectives. Allow me to briefly share uh, what we have uh, been doing. First, we continue to increase our presence in Africa. Number of our diplomatic uh, representations uh, rose from 12 in 2002 to 42 today. And we will soon open embassies in Togo and Guinea-Bissau. Our development agency, TICA and Education Foundation, MARIF, have also increased their presence in the region. Second, uh, we increase official development assistance in line with the Addis Ababa Action Agenda commitments. Between 2009 and 2019, we provided $2.5 billion of such assistance to LDCs. And this amounts to 1.15% of our GNI. Third, we continue our support to the UN Technology Bank for LDCs, which we host in Gebze near Istanbul to help its efforts in uh, bridging the digital uh, divide. The establishment of the bank was a, a commitment of uh, President uh, Erdogan made at the uh, Ford Conference. Uh, I invite development partners particularly to contribute uh, to the bank, uh, which relies on voluntary uh, donations. We are also in consultations with the UN Conference and, uh, on Trade and Development to set up an international science, technology, and innovation center for LDCs. Fourth, we increase our efforts to assist the LDCs in their fight against COVID-19. We, we, as Turkey, responded uh, to the medical equipment requests uh, of 157 countries, many of which were LDCs, as well as uh, 12 international organizations also assisting LDCs. Affordable and equitable supply of vaccine is also vital. And uh, we also support uh, the Technology Access Partnership Initiative uh, led by the Technology Bank to increase the local production of essential medical technologies in the LDCs. Fifth, considering the fact that uh, the financial pressure on the LDCs rose due to the COVID-19, we supported the G20 Debt Service uh, Suspension Initiative. Six, uh, through joint projects with the UNDP, such as the Partnership in Development Program, we are working to in increase the private sector's role Travaillons in development and its engagement uh, through South-South uh, uh, cooperation. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen process. and dear friends, the fifth conference will uh, present us an opportunity to redesign the parameters for a renewed partnership. Turkey has, has provided one million dollars to support the uh, preparatory meetings, and yes. we'll continue to cooperate with uh, Qatar uh, for a successful uh, conference. I commend the efforts of Ambassador Volkan Boskur, president of the 75th uh, UN General Assembly, 
for prioritizing the LDC, uh, LDCs uh, in UN General Assembly's work. In the next uh, program of action, we need to focus our efforts on building uh, production capacities and promoting structural uh, transformation in LDCs, mobilizing domestic resources and creating a positive environment for private investment will be crucial. As a bureau member of the uh, preparatory committee and co-chair of the group of friends, we will do our best for an action-oriented conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, Mr. Kavusuklo. Uh, let me also take this opportunity to thank you, Your Excellency, uh, and of course, your country of Turkey. Would like to thank you very, very much and very, very sincerely for this opening statement, but above all, also uh, the support that your country, Turkey, has provided to the group of LDCs in general, and of course, the organization of this Africa Regional Review Meeting in particular. You have been very, very handy and would like to appreciate and we're looking forward to doing greater things together. It's now my pleasure to invite His Excellency Sultan bin Saad al khwi Minister of State for Foreign Affairs of the State of Qatar. Your Excellency. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. فخامة رئيس جمهورية ملاوي سعادة نائب رئيس جمهورية ملاوي وزير التخطيط الاقتصادي والتنمية وإصلاح القطاع العام أصحاب المعالي والسعادة وكيلة الأمين العام للأمم المتحدة والممثل السامي لأقل البلدان نموا والبلدان النامية غير الساحلية والدول الجزرية الصغيرة والنامية السيدات والسادة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسعدني في البداية أن أتوجه بخالص الشكر والتقدير لجمهورية ملاوي على استضافة هذا الاجتماع والشكر موصول لجميع المشاركين في تنظيمه إنه من دواعي سرورنا أن نشارك في هذا الاجتماع الهام وكان الأمل يحدونا أن نكون في جمهورية ملاوي الصديقة الذي تنتمي إلى القارة الأفريقية التي نفخر ونعتز بالعلاقات مع دولها الشقيقة والصديقة لولا التقييدات التي فرضتها الأزمة الصحية العالمية نتيجة تداعيات جائحة فيروس كورونا التي لحقت آثارها السلبية جميع دول العالم وخاصة البلدان أقل نموا ونتطلع أن يتقلب العالم على هذه الجائحة قريبا بتعاوننا وشراكاتنا وتؤكد التحديات الراهنة التي يشهدها العالم ضرورة الترابط والتكامل بين جميع دول العالم وانطلاقا من إرثنا وقيمنا وسياسة دولة قطر الراسخة في التعاون والشراكة مع المجتمع الدولي فإن دولة قطر لم تدخل وسعا في الوقوف مع إخواننا وشركائنا في الإنسانية ولا سيما في المجال الإنساني والتنموي وانسجاما مع التزاماتنا لدعم قضايا الدول النامية والأقل نموا فقد اطلعت دولة قطر بدورها المنشود في مختلف المجالات التي تخدم تلك الدول وشكلت قضاياها إحدى أولوياتنا وحرصنا على استضافة مؤتمرات الأمم المتحدة الهامة في هذا الخصوص والتي حققت النتائج المنشودة ويشير منها على سبيل المثال مؤتمر قمة الجنوب الثانية في عام 2005 ومؤتمر المتابعة الدولي لتمويل التنمية المعني باستعراض تنفيذ توافق أرا مونتري في عام 2008 والدورة الثالثة عشر لمؤتمر الأمم المتحدة للتجارة والتنمية في عام 2012 والمؤتمر الثامن عشر للدول الأطراف لاتفاقية الأمم المتحدة الإطارية بشأن تغير المناخ في العام 2012 وفي هذا الإطار وإدراكا من دولة قطر لأهمية دعم البلدان المتضررة من الآثار السلبية لتغيير المناخ فقد أعلن حضر صاحب السمو الشيخ تميم بن حمد الثاني أمير دولة قطر حفظه الله خلال مؤتمر القمة للعمل المناخي التي انعقدت في شهر سبتمبر عام 2019 عن مساهمة دولة قطر بمبلغ 100 مليون دولار أمريكي لدعم البلدان الأقل نموا والدول الجزرية الصغيرة والنامية للتعامل مع تغير المناخ كما واصلت دولة قطر جهودها في إطار العمل الدولي المتعدد الأطراف 
لدعم كافة المبادرات الرامية لإيجاد حلول الأزمات والتحديات التي أثقلت كاهل العديد من الدول النامية والأقل نموا وألغت بأثارها السلبية على السلام والاستقرار في العالم أصحاب السعادة والمعالي السيدات والسادة على الرغم من الصعوبات على الرغم من صعوبة التحديات التي يواجهها العالم في الوقت الراهن بسبب تفشي جائحة كورونا فإننا على ثقة بأن مؤتمر الأمم المتحدة الخامس المعني بأقل البلدان نموا الذي تعتز دولة قطر باستضافته خلال الفترة من 23 إلى 27 يناير من عام 2022 سيتيح فرصة استثنائية تساهم ليس فقط في الاستجابة لهذه التحديات بل في وضع تدابير هادفة من أجل التعافي وبناء قدرات أقل البلدان نموا لمواجهة هذه التحديات في المستقبل ويسعدنا في دولة قطر بدل كافة الجهود في هذا المؤتمر وأن نكون شريكا رئيسيا في الجهود المبذولة للاستجابة لتلبية احتياجات وأولويات أقل البلدان نموا وكلنا ثقة بأن هذا المؤتمر سيساهم في تلبية احتياجاتها ودعم مسيرتها نحو تحقيق التنمية فيها للسنوات العشر القادمة وبما يتماشى مع خطة التنمية المستدامة لعام 2030 وتمكين هذه البلدان من الخروج من قائمة أقل البلدان نموا وفي إطار منطلقات هناك اجتماعنا هذا من إسطنبول إلى الدوحة نتطلع لأن يبني مؤتمر الدوحة القادم على الخبرات المكتسبة والنجاحات التي تحققت من المؤتمرات السابقة وآخرها مؤتمر الأمم المتحدة الرابع المعني بأقل البلدان نموا الذي استضافته جمهورية تركيا الشقيقة وكان لجهودها المقدرة إسهامات متميزة في النتائج الناجحة التي تمخض عنها المؤتمر والمتمثلة في برنامج عمل إسطنبول لصالح أقل البلدان نموا للعقد 2011-2020 إننا نتطلع أن يستكمل برنامج عمل الدوحة للعقد المقبل تحقيق الأهداف التي ما زالت في طور الإنجاز وأن يكون نقطة انطلاق وخارطة طريق بصفته أول برنامج عمل سيتصدى ويعطي أولوية لمعالجة تداعيات وباء فيروس كورونا على أقل البلدان نموا لإحداث التغييرات المنشودة في حياة الملايين من الذين يعيشون في أقل البلدان نموا وبما يضمن تحقيق المكاسب الإنمائية المرجوة وإحداث التغيير التحولي المنشود وختاما نتطلع للتعاون معكم ومع كافة الشركاء لإنجاح مؤتمر الدوحة ونؤكد على أن دولة قطر لن تألو جهدا ليكون مؤتمر الأمم المتحدة الخامس في الدوحة حدثا فارغا في الاستجابة لتطلعات أقل البلدان نموا وبما يحقق التنمية الشاملة فيها والاستفادة من الطاقة الهائلة من الموارد البشرية والطبيعية التي تمتلكها أقل البلدان نموا لتحقيق النمو والازدهار ونتطلع للترحيب بكم جميعا في مدينة دوحة العام المقبل أشكركم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته شكرا جزيلا سيدي سوتان بن سعد المرايكي مينستر of state for foreign affairs of the state of Qatar. Let me also take this opportunity to thank you on behalf of the Malawi government for your country's support, support that you've been uh, rendering to this country, Malawi, and of course, uh, a lot of support that uh, you have given to the organization of this meeting. We really, really appreciate, we really appreciate. And uh, of course, we look forward to a successful uh, conference next year in Doha, Qatar. I now have the pleasure to invite Honorable Ms. Karina Good, Minister, come again, Minister of Development Cooperation of Canada to deliver his opening statement. Ms. Karina Good, please. Thank you. Excellencies, friends, and colleagues, thank you for the opportunity to join you today and to speak at the opening of this important meeting. Thank you to President Chakwera and the government of Malawi for their leadership in advancing the program of action and for hosting us today. And thank you also to the UN organizers of this event. 
Today and in the coming days, you will take stock of the progress made under the Istanbul Program of Action as you prepare for the new 10-year Program of Action to be adopted in Doha next year. This work will take place in the context of the UN's Decade of Action and our shared vision to end poverty, save the planet, and build a more peaceful world by achieving the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. It is a considerable agenda to be sure, and it is one that takes place against a backdrop of a pandemic. For nearly a year, COVID-19 has posed unprecedented global challenges and has disproportionately affected least developed countries where it threatens to roll back hard won gains. What is more, the emergence of COVID-19 has served to exacerbate pre-existing challenges that the audience is already facing the worsening effects of climate change, protracted conflicts, and resulting historic levels of human migration, as well as significant pressure due to debt levels in many least developed countries. Canada recognizes the complex and increasing challenges facing least developed countries. We are committed to listening and working closely with you as partners as we respond. For African LDCs in particular, we support your efforts to fulfill the promise of the historic African continental free trade area. And Canada is delighted to co-chair, alongside Bangladesh, the Preparatory Committee for LDC5. Indeed, we are pleased to collaborate in many forums, including the Financing for Development in the Era of COVID-19 and Beyond initiative that Canada's Prime Minister co-leads alongside Jamaica and the UN Secretary General. The menu of policy options stemming from this process in which many of you have been involved may prove valuable to consider, discuss, and potentially include in the next program of action. As the world prepares to rebuild fairer and greener, the momentum behind financing for development is growing and Canada will continue to leverage our participation and voice in various international forums to ensure that policy options are translated into concrete actions and results. We will continue to partner with LDC on a range of initiatives at a country level to support your development objectives. Just frankly, too much is at stake. We cannot see the gains we have made to increase primary enrollment and completion rates for girls and boys in African and Haitian schools reversed. Our shared future depends on the young people of African LDCs in Haiti to have the education, training, and job opportunities they need so they can contribute fully to their communities. And this also means that we need to listen to the voices of young people when we make decisions that affect them today and in the future. Of course, the greater prosperity we aim for cannot happen without greater participation from women. And to enable this, we must work towards greater financial inclusion so that women have equal access to capital, markets, digital technology, and business development services. Our economies cannot move forward if half of our people are left behind. The next 10 years present an opportunity to innovate, to pivot where necessary, and to align our efforts to solve the challenges LDCs face. The future depends on a lasting commitment to move forward with inclusive solutions that will see the world achieve the SDGs together with no one left behind. Canada is here to learn, to listen, and to work with you. May your discussions and deliberations over the coming days be fruitful and point us toward a better future. Merci, and thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister Good, Minister of Development Cooperation of Canada, for your remarks and your opening statement. And let me also take this opportunity to thank the government of Canada on the very, very crucial role of co-chair for the negotiations of the next program of action for our group. We really, really, it is my great pleasure and singular honor to introduce His Excellency, President of the Republic of Malawi, chairperson of the LDC group, Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwera. Your Excellency, please.
Your Honor, Dr. Salas Klaus Liman, Vice President of the Republic of Malawi and Minister Responsible for Economic Planning and Development and Public Sector Reforms, Your Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdulahim Adani, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of the State of Qatar, Your Excellency Mr. Horkan Boskio, President of the United Nations General Assembly, Ms. Nikita Takumanan Manu, Under Secretary General and High Representative for LDCs, LLDCs, SIDS, and Secretary General, LDC 5 Conference. Your Excellency, Mr. Mevlut Kavsoglu, Minister of State of Turkey. Honorable Ms. Karina Gould, Minister of Development Cooperation of Canada, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am very delighted to welcome you to this much anticipated meeting. I would have loved to host you all here in Nilongwe, but this meeting has been overshadowed by the COVID-19 pandemic since 2020, so we have to make do with meeting virtually. Greater than the pandemic's disruption to the social and economic fabric of our nations has been its devastation on all of us through the loss of friends, family, and compatriots. And so let me take this opportunity to express my deepest condolences to all of you. Although this pandemic began as a health crisis, its adverse effects have spilled over to other key sectors. The LDC members' GDP shrunk by 1.3% in 2020, thereby increasing the number of poor households and worsening poverty between and within countries with disproportionate effects on women. The pandemic has exposed our limitations in the fields of science, technology, and innovations which has laid bare the digital and technological divide between nations. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the group of LDCs issued a statement on COVID-19 calling for a global stimulus package for LDCs, which include among others, official development assistance support, debt relief, aid for trade and access to technologies. Our immediate concern is equitable and universal access to COVID vaccines and the necessity of declaring it as a global public good, as this is the only way to curtail the massive spread of the pandemic. The International Chamber of Commerce recently published a paper that clearly shows that the economic consequences for all countries will be much higher if poor countries are left out of vaccination efforts. Any prolonged disruption of global travel and trade will be catastrophic. We need to do these things in order to ensure that the current conditions do not derail our efforts to achieve the goals we share, particularly Agenda 2063, which articulates the vision of the Africa we want. We need to maintain our resolve to achieve this kind of structural transformation and productive cap capacity that will integrate African LDCs into the global world, especially through the implementation of the recently launched African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Based on our experience so far, it is crucial to appraise the implementation of the Istanbul Program of Action. Despite attaining mixed progress, the program's principles remain valid, namely the principles of ownership and leadership, which place primary responsibility for our development on us, the LDCs. To live up to these principles, 
emphasis must be placed on upholding the rule of law, promoting peace and justice, and ensuring the inclusion of all relevant stakeholders, especially the youth. And we seek global support in these pandemic times. These are the principles around which we ought to build a genuine partnership and solidarity among ourselves. We should be optimistic and identify people-centered solutions to the current global economic crisis and build resilience for the ones to come. Collectively, we need to lay the groundwork for a sustainable, resilient, and gender responsive future to build back greener, better, and stronger. This meeting will discuss and adopt a progressive document which will form the basis of the new program action for LDCs to be adopted at the fifth UN conference on LDCs to be held in Doha in 2022. So let me just highlight a few areas of focus. First, systemic resilience and crisis preparedness. On our part as LDCs, we must work hard and smart in collaboration with our development partners to address the climate crisis. It is clear that we need new approaches that build systemic resilience to future shocks in all LDCs. Therefore, we need a comprehensive multi-hazard crisis mitigation and resilience building mechanism for LDCs. Second, domestic resource mobilization. We need to identify measures to expand fiscal space and foster domestic resource mobilization including preventing illicit financial flaws, base erosion, and profit shifting. While the development of the Debt Service Standstill Initiative, DSSI, of the G20 was timely and is certainly well, its scope and coverage is limited. We therefore need a mechanism for, the, for real debt workout, especially for those African LDCs that are in or close to debt distress. At the same time, we should prioritize efficient utilization of all available resources of finance, of sources of finance and strengthen our capacity to access that. Third, science, technology and innovation, SDI, we should harness science, technology, and innovation in order to realize major breakthroughs in retrofitting our economies. This should com be complemented by the following access to modern technologies, including new and renewable technologies, resilient infrastructure that withstand disasters, and improve technological and managerial skills, especially among young women. Fourth, resilient food and nutrition systems. Currently, the rise in malnutrition and undernourishment is undermining our potential for growth and prosperity. We need to transform agri-food systems to ensure that no one is constrained to access health diets, healthy diets, but also that food systems are sustainable. And last but not least, partnership and cooperation. We urge the international community to demonstrate solidarity and provide stronger international support to avert the various crises affecting LDCs and build long-term resilience. I call on our partners to understand that as has been the case with addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, tackling acute development challenges faced by LDCs must be done multilaterally. That means we need a common and collaborative response that is ambitious, and that will be our measure of success 
for the fifth UN conference in Doha. As we march toward that goal, I wish you all fruitful and constructive discussions. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That's uh, His Excellency, Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwira, President of the Republic of Malawi, who is also a chairperson of the LDCs, delivering a special message, special opening remarks. Your Excellency, Dr. Lazarus McCarthy Chakwera, President of the Republic of Malawi, the right Honorable Ministers, Excellences, Distinguished Guests, Distinguished Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen. I would like to thank all of you for very, very important statements that you have made. I am sure we are all looking forward to the engaging sessions the rest of the week. I would like, therefore, to encourage you all to participate in many sessions and side events during the next four days. Stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. May God bless you all.